Hello and welcome to Talking Tolkien. Now, I love a good bookcase. Whenever I see a photo of someone or a video and there's a bookcase behind them, you can guarantee I'll be there trying to scrutinise what titles are on the shelf. It doesn't matter if it's books, it could be DVDs, whatever it is. I think showing what kind of books or films someone's watched or read really gives an insight into the character of that person. So with that said, and because this is a channel about Tolkien, wouldn't it be amazing to actually be able to see what kind of books Tolkien himself read? Now, there's various photos that exist that show the, a few books behind him, but imagine if someone went to the trouble of working out exactly what books he was known to have owned, read, lent out over his life. Well, it just so happens that such a book has recently been released. So, in considering Tolkien's library, you can imagine how delighted I was when I realised that a book was going to be released which went to painstaking detail on the exact books Tolkien was known to have read. Uh, here's that book in hardcover, a Tolkien's library, an annotated checklist by Oronzo Cini. We'll look in a, into it in a little bit shortly, uh, but for now let's have a look at what it actually is. So, a quick summary of the blurb on the back. A combination of circumstances means that we know more about J.R.R. Tolkien than almost any other author from any period. Nevertheless, in spite of all these efforts, there remains a certain opacity about Tolkien, both professionally and personally. As this book shows, there is a way to bridge this gap which has not been previously attempted, a fact which makes this work by Oronzo Chili or arguably the work with most potential for giving us a truer understanding of Tolkien, a work which, besides its own immediate effect, points the way for many further studies. What Aronzo has done is, quite simply, to collect what is known about the books Tolkien owned and read. So this is a comprehensive list of all the books he owned and read. Now, for the vast majority of people who enjoy reading The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings, this is going to be of no interest whatsoever. Its, its value is far more in an academic way, going back to Tolkien's roots, not as an author so much, but when he was Professor of Anglo-Saxon at Oxford University and his previous work in languages. Because it's worth restating that Tolkien's background was as a philologist, so studying languages, and that was ultimately how he became to start The Lord of the Rings. It was to give background to the languages that he'd invented. So this, this is obviously going to be much heavier in linguistic works, going back to Anglo-Saxon periods, and also things like fairy stories, you know, old traditional stories which would have informed his work in Lord of the Rings. But I'm sure that there's far more surprises in here outside of those more predictable works. So without further ado, let's have a look inside the book. So this is what the book looks like. The obvious thing you can see there is the cover art, which is just really stunning. Let's have a look in it itself. Okay, so we'll go into a random page. It's divided into two primary sections. The first section is books which are known to have been uh, owned or read by Tolkien at some point in his life. So here you can see, obviously, the author. And also, in the area at the bottom, for example, here, we can see where it was actually referred to. So this one about Beowulf was referred to in Finn and Hengest in 1982 and it tells you exactly where it was as well so you know stuff like Jack and the Beanstalk in his translation of Beowulf it's mentioned so we know that he read Jack and the Beanstalk so this was a really obviously huge daunting task to actually have gone through all of his works and established what was referred to where and when so I'll use that same example as before let's have a look at Milton if we can find it Okay, yeah. So here we are. So Milton, uh, John Milton, these are all the books that Tolkien's known to have owned by or read by Milton. So here's Paradise Lost. Here it shows that it was referred to in a draft of a talk to the Oxford Dante Society uh, in 1947 because Tolkien quoted Brown as Evening. Similarly, again, it was referred to in a University of e Leeds lecture on English language and literature. And then there's other references as well. So for something like that, it's, it's fairly 
apparent and that's that's something he read so that's section a obviously there's loads to get your teeth into here if this is the kind of thing that floats your boat then we get into section b so it's still in section a there and when we get into section b these are the books uh, by tolkien and his contributions to periodicals published throughout his lifetime so here again is a real uh, comprehensive section of, of everything that he he wrote started right back in 1910 at the debating society for king eds in birmingham all the way through to his later works so hopefully that's been useful in just giving a bit of an overview of what this tolkien publication is you can find it on all good bookshops there's a hardback and a paperback option with it and i'm sure as it says on the back that it's going to result in a lot of further academic work as a follow-on from that but again it's not for everyone but i just thought it was worth having a look and showing you the kind of books that are being written and what's out there at the moment so uh, to end there thanks for watching and um, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and i'll endeavor to create some more uh, that's it goodbye